dismissed the priest with a brutal order ringing in his ears. Shattered with anger, the old man withdrew, but Apollo heard his prayer. He loved him deeply. He loosed his shaft at the Argives, withering plague. Now the troops began to drop and die in droves, and the arrows of God went showering left and right, whipping through the Achaeans' vast encampment. But the old seer, who knew the cause full well, revealed the will of the archer god Apollo. And I was the first mother. I urged them all, appease the god at once. That's when the fury gripped the son of Atreus. Agamemnon leapt to his feet and hurled his threat. His threat's been driven home. One, one, one girl, Chryseis. The fiery-eyed Achaeans ferry out in a fast trim ship to Chryseis Island laden with presents for the god. And the other girl, just now the heralds came and led her away from camp. Chryseis' daughter, the prize the armies gave me. But you, mother, if you have any power at all, Protect your son. Go to Olympus. Plead with Zeus. If you ever warmed his heart with a word or any action. <sighs> Time and again I heard your claims in Father's Halls, boasting how you and you alone of all the immortals rescued Zeus, the lord of the dark storm cloud from ignominious stark defeat. That day the Olympians tried to chain him down. Hera, Poseidon, lord of the sea, and Pallas Athena. You rushed to Zeus, dear goddess, broke those chains. Quickly ordered the hundred-handed a steep Olympus, that monster whom the immortals call Briarius. But every mortal called the sea god's son Aegeon. Though he's stronger than his father, down he sat. Flanking Kronos' son, gargantuan in the glory of it all, and the blessed gods were struck with terror then, and they stopped shackling Zeus. Remind him of that. Now go and sit beside him and grasp his knees. Persuade him somehow to help the Trojan cause, to Pin the Achaeans back against their ships. Trap them round the bay. Mow them down so all can reap the benefits of their king. So even mighty Atreides can see how mad he was to disgrace Achilles, the best of the Achaeans. And Thetis answered, bursting into tears, Oh, my son. My sorrow. Why did I ever bear you? All I bore was doom. Would to God you could linger by your ships without a grief in the world, without a torment. Doomed to a short life, you have so little time. And not only short now, but filled with heartbreak too. More than all other men alive. Doomed twice over. Ah, to a cruel fate bore you in our halls. Still, I shall go to Olympus, crown the snow, and repeat your prayer to Zeus who loves the lightning. And perhaps he will be persuaded. But you, my child, stay here by the fast ships. Rage on at the Achaeans. Just keep clear of every foray in the fighting. Only yesterday Zeus went off to the ocean river to feast with the Ethiopians, loyal, lordly men, and all the gods went with him. But in twelve days the father returns to Olympus, and then, for your sake, up I go to the bronze floor, the royal house of Zeus. I'll grasp his knees. I, I, I think I'll win him over. With that vow, his mother went away and left him there alone his heart inflamed for the sashed and lovely girl they'd wrenched away from him against his will. Now the squadrons marshaled, captains leading each, the Trojans came with cries in the din of war, like wildfowl, when the long hoarse cries of cranes sweep against the sky and the great formations flee from winter's grim, ungodly storm. 
flying in force, shrieking south to the ocean gulfs, speeding blood and death to the pygmy warriors, launching a daybreak savage battle down upon their heads. But Achaia's armies came on strong in silence, breathing combat fury, hearts ablaze to defend each other to the death. When the south wind showers mist on the mountain tops, no friend to the shepherds. Uh, better than night of thieves, uh, you can see no farther than you can fling a stone. So dust came clouding, swirling up from the feet of armies, marching at top speed, trampling through the plain. Now closer, closing front to front in the onset, till Paris sprang from the Trojan forward ranks. A challenger! Live, magnificent as a god, the skin of a leopard slung across his shoulders, a reflex bow at his back, and a battle sword at hip, and, and branching two sharp spears, tipped in bronze, he strode forth, challenging all the Argive fleet to fight him face to face, mortal combat. As soon as the warrior Menelaus marked him, Paris parading there with his big, loping strides, flaunting for the troops. Atrides thrilled like a lion, lighting on some handsome carcass, lucky to find an antlered stag or wild goat just as hunger strikes, and he rips it, and bolts it down, even with running dogs and lusty hunters rushing him. And so Menelaus thrilled at heart, princely Paris, there! right before his eyes. The outlaw. The adulterer. <laughs> now for revenge, he thought. Down he leapt from his chariot, fully armed, and hit the ground. <laughs> but soon as magnificent Paris marked Atreides, shining upon the champions, Paris' spirit Backing into his friendly ranks, he cringed from death as one who uh, trips on a snake uh, in a hilltop hollow and recoils. Suddenly, trembling, rips his knees, and pallor takes his cheeks, and back he shrinks. So he dissolves again in the proud Trojan lines, dreading Atreides. <laughs> Magnificent, brave Paris. And at one glance, Hector raked his brother with insults, stinging taunts. Paris! Appalling Paris! Our prince of beauty! Mad for women, you lure them all to ruin. Would to God you'd never been born! A died unwed, that's all I'd ask. Better that we, by far, had never seen you strutting here. An outrage! A mockery in the eyes of all our enemies. Why, the long-haired Achaeans must be roaring with laughter. I thought you the bravest champion we could field. And just because of the handsome luster on your limbs, but you have no pith, no fighting strength inside you. What? Is, is this the man who mustered the oarsmen once, who braved the seas in his racing deep sea ships, trafficked with outlanders, carried off a woman far from her distant shores, a great beauty wed to a land of rugged spearmen? You? Curse to your father, your city, all your people, a joy to our enemies, rank disgrace to yourself. So you can't stand up to the battling Menelaus. You'd soon feel his force, that man who you robbed of his sumptuous warm wife. No use to you then with a fine liar and these, these 